So for those of you who are new to asking bids, um, there are rules concerning Trump agreement with each of the Trump asking bids, and they're all slightly different. But there are certain criteria that must be met before we've got Trump's considered to be agreed. Before we've reached that point, Epsilon simply isn't available. Once we have agreed Trump's, then apart from repeat Trump asks to clarify Teller's holding in the Trump suit, the only asking bids that are available, generally speaking, are Beta, if we don't already know how many controls Partner has, and Epsilon. So Trump agreement is like a, a switch in some respects that turn off, turns off probably half of the asking bids in the arsenal and turns one on, i.e. Epsilon. So um, we've talked previously about the preference between asking bids and the most important thing is getting Trump agreement, which is why the Trump asking bids have essentially precedence over anything else. Establishing partners' general level of controls is the next most important thing. So beta takes precedence over epsilon. And epsilon is the lowest one on that ladder because it's asking about suit-specific controls and that's considered uh, the least important of the three things. That doesn't mean to say that you have to use beta. Um, you can ignore beta if it doesn't suit your purposes for a given hand. What we're talking about here is if there is any potential confusion in your mind as to whether, for example, four clubs can be beta or whether it's epsilon or indeed whether it's a Trump asking bid. If Trump asking bids are still enabled because we haven't yet agreed Trumps, then potentially four clubs can be a Trump asking bid. If we have agreed Trumps, then it can't be one of them, but it can be beta or epsilon. If we've established how many controls partner has, then four clubs cannot be beta. If we haven't, then potentially it can be, if beta isn't available some other way. In other words, if we've got, um, for example, a, an asking bid response that uh, is three hearts, and that agrees diamonds as trumps, then over three hearts, if we don't already know how many controls partner has, then three spades will be relay beta. So in that instance, four clubs can't be beta because three spades is beta. So four clubs will be epsilon. But if the asking bid response that agrees diamonds was three spades, now three no trumps would be reserved in case uh, Asker wants to sign off in three no trumps, so we keep that aside. And now four clubs would be relay beta and not epsilon. So that's all just to do with, with the precedence with asking bids. And it's very important that you realize uh, where you stand with epsilon. Epsilon's a very, very useful asking bid, but it gets bumped out, bumped out of the way by other bids until we've agreed trumps and until we've established how many controls partner has. Okay, so there we've got a sequence. One club, one heart, one no trump, low level beta, two diamonds showing three controls. So now we know exactly how many controls partner has. So beta is out the window. We can't have a beta later on in this sequence. <coughs> so now, uh, two hearts is gamma, two no trumps shows 
uh, one top honor with a five card suit in hearts um, and because beta is out of the window now three clubs would be epsilon three dams is epsilon because the fact essentially epsilon is the only new asking bid that we have we could potentially have three hearts which would be a repeat gamma in hearts and we can't use epsilon in the agreed trump suit ever because epsilon is about side suits that's why we have to agree trumps first because if we don't know what the trump suit is we don't know what the side suits are okay so um three diamonds can't be a trump asking bid because two hearts agrees hearts as trumps so after two no trumps epsilon is the only asking bid available and you can make as many epsilons and repeat epsilons as you like within the limits of common sense so hopefully that will give uh, those of you that are new to asking bids a little bit of a, a tutorial in in how to spot which asking bid is which Here's another one. Okay, so now this time, thinking back about preference and precedence with asking vids, it's gone one club, one heart, one no trump, two clubs, naught to two controls. So we don't yet, although we've used beta, we don't yet know exactly how many controls uh, responder has in this sequence. Now over two hearts, gamma, two no trumps, Relay beta takes precedence over epsilon. So here, three clubs is relay beta. And if you want to find out exactly what degree of control partner has in clubs, you're going to have to wait until you've used relay beta first and then ask in four clubs, finding out exactly how many controls partner has. Any questions so far? Okay, uh, one last uh, example. Okay, so this time, see if you can figure out what's going on. One club, one spade, two clubs is alpha, two hearts, naught to three, no good club support, two spades. Two spades can't be epsilon because two hearts doesn't agree clubs as trumps so trump asking bids are still active and it can't be epsilon because we haven't agreed to trump suit and although you might think two spades might be beta it can't be because the trump asking bids take precedence over beta as well as epsilon so two spades is a trump asking bid in this instance it would be one called iota which I think we look at next week. Um, and, uh, or maybe it's a couple of weeks, I can't remember now. Yeah, I think it's Delta next week. Um, and then if the response to two spades agrees spades as trumps, now a relay in the next suit would be beta because we haven't established how many controls partner has and because of the two heart uh, I'm sorry that two heart should say four plus not uh, naught to three two diamonds would be uh, naught to three with negative um, misprint by me um, so two hearts in that sequence is showing no good club support but four or more controls so now if it went two spades um, three clubs showing uh, two top honors and a three card suit or four small um, or is it just four small no it's four small sorry not uh, two top honors or four small um, so yeah over two spades three hearts be showing four small hearts uh, with no top honors and now three spades would be a uh, repeat iota 
asking if partner had the jack of hearts um, because he's denied a top honor that's the only other thing he can be asking um, and three no trumps would be relay beta so over two spades three hearts four clubs would indeed be epsilon It can't be relay beta because three no trumps is relay beta. In this instance, because we've agreed a major, uh, we're not going to want to back off into no trumps. Knowing that we've got at least a four four fit, if not a five four fit. Um, and uh, so because three no trumps is relay beta, anything else at the four level in a side suit is going to be epsilon. Any questions? Okay, let's uh, um, just give you one example here. Do you not want those? Do you not want them? Is that is that all for me? Mm. I'm in heaven. I've just been handed a small tray of baklava. Right, sorry, let's have a look at Octay's question. One club, one heart, one no trump. No, Octay, it's not relay beta. Uh, sorry, it's not uh, relay repeat gamma. Because nobody's even mentioned clubs as trumps. A repeat gamma is going to be three hearts over two no trumps. Repeat gammas are always, but always, in the, the agreed trump suit. Unless we have some interference. So there, three clubs is relay beta because we haven't agreed, or we don't know how many controls partner has. Two hearts agrees, hearts as trumps. Um, and so three clubs is always relay beta. Okay, let's move on. Uh, I was just going to do this hand quickly. So here we have one club opener. A club, club positive. So this is an asking bid we've uh, you won't have come across before. Um, you'll see that the week after next. So three hearts is asking about hearts. Oops, sorry.
So four diamonds of Grease Heart. So at this stage, we know exactly how many controls West has. We've agreed Hearts as Trumps. Um, so any asking bid now is going to be Epsilon in a side suit. So probably West here can work out that we've got 11 controls between the two hands. So we're only missing one king. So we might, uh, given that, we know that West has got the ace of spades. We know he's got the king of hearts. And we know, we know, in fact, already that the, the one king that we're missing is going to be the king of spades. So at this point, we're going to ask in clubs. And note that this is Epsilon. It's not Gamma. Can't be Gamma because we've agreed hearts as trumps. And once we've agreed hearts as trumps, all of the other asking bids go out the window. Okay, we know that the the four diamond bid, Charlene, shows either two top honours doubleton or three to a top honour. Either way, West must have the king of hearts. Okay, and we can be reasonably sure, but five clubs are going to make certain that West has got the king of clubs. But five clubs is making absolutely certain. Okay, so that's second and third round control. And since West bid clubs in the first place, that must be king, queen to five. And we might ask again. This is what's called a repeat epsilon, which because we know that West has got a club suit, is basically just asking him, have you got the jack as well? Again, I'll explain all this uh, in more detail when we look at the steps for Epsilon and uh, we look, when we look at repeat Epsilons in just a minute. Now we know we're going to get five discards on the clubs. We know the hearts are solid. And that's going to take care of uh, the two losers in spades and uh, the losing diamond if we need to. And as it turns out, if we can just rough a second round of diamonds, it doesn't even matter if the clubs are 5-1. We're still going to get two discards to discard the spades on the clubs. Any questions? Yeah, but repeat gamma, Sanya, is, if there's no interference, a repeat gamma is always a bid of the agreed trump suit. Okay, repeat gamma is not a relay in the next B 
bid. Okay, the only time a repeat of that sort can be can be uh, um, a sort of repeat one is with alpha. If we have, for example, a five-step positive response to alpha, so supposing it goes one club, one heart, one spade, two spades. Well, no, we don't, Walid, because if uh, we know that partner's got the ace of spades, if we know that he's got uh, king, queen to five clubs, especially once we know he's got king, queen, jack to five clubs, because he bid two clubs over one club. Now we know we're going to get three discards on the clubs. Okay? And uh, that takes care of the six and seven of spades and the five of diamonds. If we're unlucky enough to find clubs being 5-1, uh, which they are, as it happens, as it turns out, what we need to do is to rough a diamond in the west hand instead. Now we just get two discards on uh, the clubs, not three, but that's all we need. Okay? But once he bids five no trumps over five clubs, absolutely he cannot have the king of spades. Because we know he's got the king of clubs, we know he's got the king of hearts, and therefore it must be the king of spades that's missing, because we're only missing one control. We've got seven, he's got four. Okay? Okay, once he shows up with the king of clubs, he can't have the king of spades because we know he's got the king of hearts. So the only way he can have four controls, which is what he's promised, is to have the king of clubs, king of hearts, and the ace of spades. Okay. So at this stage, we're only interested in first, second, and third round controls. With repeat epsilons, we do start asking potentially about fourth round control, but only when partner's got a four card or longer suit, we want him to show or deny the jack. Okay, now that might look a little bit odd if you've never seen Epsilon before. Um, that The first step shows either no control at all, in other words, at least three small cards. Uh, maybe the jack, but uh, you might have jack to three, but that counts as three small cards. Or it's first and second round control. In other words, you've got ace, king, x, or the stiff ace. You might have ace, king, x, 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 but... It's the ace king with at least one more, or the stiff ace. In practice, most of the time, partner can tell the difference. And if he can't, there is scope for a repeat epsilon in the same suit to clarify whether it's no control or first and second. 
Okay, so that's one step. Two steps is third round control. Three steps is second. Four steps is second and third. And five steps, in other words, a raise of the Epsilon suit or the Epsilon bid is always first round control without second or third round control. In other words, it's a void or ace with at least two other small cards. Six steps uh, is first and third round control. First and second we've already taken care of. And seven steps is first, second and third. You might ask why we've picked out first and second um, to go in with uh, no control. Uh, it's just because it's most of the time uh, asker can tell the difference and it's less likely that they're going to be able to tell when they've got the ace queen but when they've got the ace or the king in the epsilon suit they can always tell whether it's first round control or first and second first second and third we don't move back to uh, the one step response because it's pretty rare it's not very often that we end up showing first, second, and third round control. Obviously, it does happen, but not as often as first and second. So, in those steps, I've shown three examples for most of them and as I've said there the first of those examples is a type that shows a shortage maybe as well as an honor but a shortage as well if you've got a combination of second and third or first and third the second example shows an honor variety and the third shows both a shortage and an honor. In other words, if you just take the third round controls, the shortage would be a doubleton. Honor would be queen to three. But a doubleton queen is both a shortage and the queen. So that's both. And when you'll see when we get to repeat epsilons that we're normally asking what kind of control it is, whether it's a shortage or an honor. Or both. So, in the first example, there, you got one club, one no trump showing spades, two spades gamma. Three clubs showing five card spades with one top honor. And now opener is forgot about relay beta. I'm just gone straight for epsilon. So they bid three hearts, which is epsilon in hearts. So three steps to four clubs shows second round control. In the second example, one club, one heart, one spade, two spades. Good support of four controls exactly. And now three clubs isn't relay beta because we know how many controls. So three clubs is epsilon in clubs. And three diamonds shows either no controller clubs or first and second round controller clubs. Okay, so almost always, there are times over interference where we don't. 
uh, preemptive interference at that. But the general rule is that we always show as many degrees of control as we can. So if you take, for example, King X, we show King X as second and third round control, not just second. That's a very common mistake that beginners to uh, Epsilon make. Similarly, Ace X is, a is first and third, not just first. Okay, any questions on the steps to a normal epsilon and what the the responses actually show? Don't forget, we're interested in shortages as well as honor cards with epsilon. It's degrees of control. It's not just aces and kings and queens. Okay. Yes, you can, Charlene. The, the, the business of beta taking precedence over epsilon doesn't mean that you have to. It's not a straitjacket. It doesn't mean that you have to use beta. It just means if there's any potential conflict between a bid being beta and a bid being epsilon, beta takes precedence. That's all that that means. So if beta is potentially in the game and four clubs might be beta and it might be epsilon, then it's beta. <coughs> but as we've seen in some of the examples before today, um, if three no trumps is relay beta, then four clubs cannot be beta. Absolutely cannot be beta if three no trumps is beta. So in that case, four clubs would be Epsilon rather than Beta. But if, say, in a different sequence, three no trumps, you know, three spades was the last asking bid response, and three no trumps could be natural, which over a minor suit agreement it can be, now four clubs would be Beta, not Epsilon, because beta takes precedence over epsilon and we actually saw an example of, of that exact kind of sequence before okay Charlene okay um, let's just look at one more example quickly So one spade is eight plus balanced. So now we're asking about diamonds. This is Trump asking bid IOSA. Um, So three hearts is, just one second. So three hearts doesn't agree diamonds. Uh, sorry, what's talking about? Just one sec. Sorry, brain farts here. So 
sorry, misclick by me. <coughs> so three controls realistically isn't enough here to look for a slam. So we've ended up not bothering with epsilons here. Um, it would be a little foolish uh, of South to go looking for six diamonds um, knowing that we're missing an ace and a king. And if partners got the King of Diamonds, then they've only got two of them. Because the three spade response shows two to one top honor or three small. So we're either missing the King of Diamonds and an ace. Or we've only got a seven card diamond fit. Any questions? Oops. Okay, repeat epsilons. Well, I wouldn't, because now we know the King of Clubs is missing. If they haven't got, if they've got the King of Diamonds, they haven't got the King of Clubs. And you don't know you've necessarily got anywhere to park it, that losing club. Okay, well in. Okay, so what the repeat epsilon is asking depends on what the initial epsilon showed. So for the sake of example, supposing um, partner made a two-step response to our initial uh, epsilon in a side suit. So that shows third round control. If partner asks again in that suit, then we go one step if we've just got a doubleton in, in the side suit. We go two steps if we've got queen xx exactly. Three steps would show queen x exactly. Four steps would show a four card or longer suit without the jack. In other words, we've got queen to four or queen to five. And five steps shows a four card suit or longer with the jack. In other words, queen jack to four or five and so on. Okay, so that's the only, the only responses. That's the longest set of responses for a repeat beta, a uh, repeat epsilon.
There are actually a couple of other exceptions, but we'll come to them in a minute. So if the initial epsilon got a one-step response, showing either no control or first and second, it's slightly different because the first step shows no control and all the others show first and second. But it's impossible to have a category of both. Hi Paula, where we've shown first and second round control. If you think about it, the stiff ace is first and second, but that's a shortage because the second round control is a shortage. Um, Ace King X is the honor, and we can't have both. So Ace King Stiff is first, second, and third round control. So in that case, we have an extra one-step response, and we miss out the the normal three-step response um, to show both a shortage and an honor. Okay, any questions so far? So there you have an example. Three hearts was epsilon. Three no trump showed third. Four hearts a repeat epsilon. And four spades now shows a small doubleton. Four no trumps would show three into three. Five clubs would show doubleton queen. And so on. Okay, so we, we can't have a second repeat beta. It's just not possible. If uh, the, the second epsilon hasn't shown a shortage as such, i.e. a singleton or a void, then a third bid in the epsilon suit is always to play. And that does happen. You may think that's never going to happen. But actually, it happens surprisingly frequently. Particularly when Asker has pretended to agree responder's suit because it was cheaper to do that. And all the time, they were actually intending playing in their own suit. And they end up making a couple of epsilons in their... Uh, their own suit and now a third bit of the epsilon suit is to play if however the epsilon and the repeat epsilon disclose a singleton or a void and we don't yet know how many controls partner has then the third bit in that epsilon suit wouldn't be to play it would be beta if we didn't yet know how many controls partner has if we did know how many controls partner have, then that would also be to play. Or potentially, uh, it could be asking what kind of uh, singleton partner has. Um, that's very, very rare. Has been known. But... Uh, I think I've got an example of that later on. Okay, I'd mentioned that there was another exception to uh, repeat beaters. This is the other one. Uh, is where we already know 
that Responder has a four card or greater holding in the suit. And we saw an example of that in the previous hand, not this one. In the previous hand where West had King, Queen, Jack to five clubs. They'd responded two clubs, so they're known to have at least a five card club suit. We had a repeat epsilon that showed uh, second and third round control, so we know he's got King, Queen to five or longer. And the repeat epsilon in clubs is now simply asking, have you got the jack or not? One step denies, two step promises. And in that instance, we had a bit of uh, five clubs, I think, or was it six clubs, maybe. Partner bid six hearts to promise the jack, and now we bid seven hearts. That was on the previous hand. Okay, there's actually a small mistake there because the only time that we normally use splinters now is over a one heart and one spade opening. And we've changed those splinters to be exclusion beta as I showed you a few weeks ago. So, in those circumstances, it is actually the person who's got the void, or the singleton, who's doing the asking. So there's almost, there are a couple of very rare examples where we'd know about a void. Um... There are a couple in the simple system, but they are mostly in, in the uh, the complex system. Most of the time, uh, we're going to be talking about singletons. And I mentioned before that if we don't already know about how many controls, then a third bid in an epsilon suit where partners shown a singleton or void would be uh, beta. But we will always know at that stage, um, even if we, sorry, even if we know already how many controls partner has, and they've shown with the repeat beta that they've got a void or a singleton, we will know uh, whether it's a void or a singleton. So now, in practice, the special scale to distinguish between what kind of shortage it is probably won't need the void. And I haven't changed that yet, but that, that will change. Because essentially, we will already know at that stage whether it's a void or a singleton. Because the only time that would have happened is if they'd splintered in, under the old system of splinters. That won't be happening anymore. Um, so, but what we will potentially want to do, if we already know how many controls partner has, is to distinguish between a small singleton and a singleton honor, because that could be crucial. If partner's got, uh, um, say, the singleton queen, that we'd show as second round control. Um, and then a shortage, there's no scope for showing both for that because it's a second round control from the point of view of the shortage and the queen from the point of view of both is actually a third round control so it's a mixed match that doesn't quite work. So partner might still want to ask how many, or sorry, what kind of singleton we have to find out if we've got the singleton queen and there's a special scale that allows them to distinguish between that. At the moment, um, it can also show a void, 
but in practice that will be being moved because uh, there's no point in asking what kind of void. The only time that was relevant was when we'd had a splinter in the soup below our shortage and partner later on having established how many controls we had asked in the short suit to find out whether we had a void or whether we had a singleton or a singleton on it. Okay. Where are we up to? Okay. You might have got used to things like sigma which we haven't looked at properly yet but sigma has to follow immediately over the positive response to alpha if we don't use sigma immediately over the positive response to alpha it's simply not available that isn't the case with epsilon because quite often we're trying to craft the cheapest possible asking bid sequence and so we might ask in another suit first and then come back to a suit that we've made an epsilon ask in later in the sequence and make a repeat epsilon in that suit. And there's no danger of being confused about this because we've agreed a different suit as trumps. So any bid, unless we get to a third bid in the epsilon suit, any bid outside of the agreed trump suit is by definition going to be epsilon if it's not beta. Okay. So there you got an example there. Uh, we had a one heart positive response, one no trump beta, two diamonds showing three, not sorry, showing three controls, uh, two hearts, gamma in hearts, two no trumps, five to a top honor, Three diamonds, epsilon in diamonds. Um, for some reason, we want to ask in diamonds rather than clubs. Three spades shows third round control. And now we go off and ask about clubs with four clubs. Um, that got a five club response showing first round control without second or third. And now we can go back to asking about diamonds here. Five diamonds can't be a sign off because we've agreed hearts as trumps. So at this stage, five diamonds is a repeat epsilon. Five hearts would show a shortage. In other words, a doubleton diamond. And so on. And an opener can bid six hearts, pass five hearts, whatever. Okay, any questions about repeat epsilons? Okay, another example hand. It depends on the hand, Walid. Um, I'll be honest, I would ask in clubs. With a known four-card flip. But I would ask in... I would make a beta ask over two clubs. 
and then ask in clubs. Make a gamma in clubs with a known nine card pit. Okay? I, I play mostly teams, and I think most... If I'm not playing teams, I'm playing imp score, cross-imp scoring on BBO. I very rarely these days play match points. So my attitude is tempered by that. If you're playing a lot of pairs, then you might look for a spade fit first because it's going to score better. If you're playing teams, it simply isn't a factor. Um, if you ask in spades first, especially if you make a a two diamond low beta ask, three clubs gamma is going to be likely to be fairly cheap. So I would go that route. And I, rather than chasing after a, a possibly phantom spade fit, I would get the two clubs, uh, the three clubs gamma in first, and then use an epsilon to find out about partner spades. And then if need be, later on, if I've got room, jump shift into spades, which is always going to be to play. And, and that would be my my route. OK, Walid? Oh, hang on, I didn't finish this hand. So I got interrupted, I didn't finish it. Well, well, it doesn't matter if you've got four card clubs. I'm I'm going to ask in clubs rather than spades. To do what? To do what? Okay, just give me five minutes. Just let me finish. <coughs> That's right. Just give me. Ten minutes. Okay, well, if you've got five spades, two hearts, two diamonds, and four clubs, and partner makes a club positive, um, I'll be honest, I personally am not going to go looking for a spade fit. I'm going to look for a club fit first. I'll then aim to find out about the spade fit via Epsilon. And then if I've got the space and partner's got the spades, I might jump shift back into spades later on. But initially, I'm going to agree clubs. But I am going to use a, a low beta first before I agree the clubs. All right? Okay. So two spades showed singleton honor, singleton top honor, or two small. Okay, so this is always effectively setting the suitors trumps. Okay, we've had a, a theta and now a repeat theta in the same suit is asking whether it's a singleton honor or too small. But whichever partner has, it's agreeing the suitors trumps or setting the suitors trumps.
Oh, sorry, you're quite right. Thanks, uh, Barry. I got it into my head. I'd used the low beta there, but I hadn't. Sorry, just let me undo this. You're quite right. Even the even the response was wrong. That was the dead giveaway. <coughs> Yes, thanks, Barry. Sorry, it's been a long day. I've been up since uh, 6 o'clock this morning. Um, okay, so actually this time it's slightly different. So this is... Uh, this is Theta in Diamonds. So now diamonds are considered agreed. So at this stage, is there any point in using beta? I would say not really. We know partner hasn't got the Ace of Diamonds. Uh, there's a good chance that they've got the King of Spades. But if they've got the King of Spades, um, they might have something in hearts, but it's not really going to be much use to us. But we don't have another... At this stage, we we do have Relay Beta available if we want. So at this stage, we could actually bid because there is no way we're going to get a response showing too small in diamonds after this many asks in the suit. And we're going to want to play in no trumps. So at this stage, four no trumps would be Relay Beta. Worth noting that those of you who are into asking bids already, uh, normally if we've agreed a minor, we keep bids in no trumps uh, as potentially natural. In this particular sequence, there is absolutely no way that we would ever want to bid four no trumps naturally here. If we were going to do that, we'd have signed off in three no trumps over three spades. We wouldn't be insisting on agreeing diamonds opposite a known singleton honor or too small if we were just wanting to then sign off in four no trumps. Just wouldn't happen. We'd have signed off in three no trumps over three spades. So here, four no trumps can be relay beta. Uh... So again, because of the two heart response to two diamonds, this is using the weak scale because we know partner's got naught to three controls. So four no trumps is beta, five diamonds shows one control. So we already know they haven't got uh, the ace of diamonds. They might have the king of hearts, which would be totally useless. But they did show a spade suit, so they probably have um, the king of spades rather than the king of hearts. 
So it really comes down to the clubs. Um, we don't know that they haven't got uh, three card clubs. So we would be entitled to pass five diamonds here. Um, but we might think, well, he can only have six cards, sorry, six points in spades, even if he's got the king, queen, jack. And if he has got the king, queen, jack, um, we can get rid of the club losers on those, potentially. Um, but if he's just got the king, he might well have the queen of clubs. Uh, anything he has in hearts is going to be largely useless because it can't be the ace. And unless ops make a, a mistake and start trying to cash the ace of hearts, um, anything he's got in hearts is likely to be useless. So I think personally I'd probably pass five diamonds at this point. Um... If he bids five hearts showing two controls, um, now he might have the ace of hearts. Or he's got the king of spades and five card spades. And now I'm more confident about being able to get rid of some clubs on his spades. And it's a shame, as you can see, we can actually waltz six diamonds, but I don't think it's safe. Uh, you're taking a chance if you bid six diamonds here. There's just too many unknowns about the hand. And it's a sad fact. Sometimes you will miss slams. OCP is better at bidding slams than most systems I've ever seen. Um, but even OCP, sometimes this is a very expensive sequence. And sometimes you just run out of space and you can't afford to ask any more. Um, yes, I know it is valid, but, but we just can't. Bidding systems are about bidding to the best contract you can get to. It's not always and can never be always about getting to the best possible contract when you're looking at both hands. Yes, you're right. You can, you're absolutely certain to make 12 tricks with diamonds as trumps. But you just cannot safely, because this is such an expensive sequence for OCP, because we've used, we've consumed three entire rounds of bidding just to get diamonds agreed as trumps. You know, in retrospect, it might have been better for West to use a Zeta of three diamonds over one no trump. That would set diamonds as trumps without any arguments and that would be beta. Yeah, possibly, but when you've got a lower ranking suit than partner, it's much more difficult to do that. You're right, it is a possibility. You'll see when we get to Zeta, a bit later on in the series, there are criteria for using Zeta. And when you're potentially going to want to rough, in partner's hand, it's generally not a good time to use Zeta. And here you might well want to rough clubs in the east hand. The thing is, if you use Zeta, you can never find out how many trumps partner has. He might have four of them, he might have a void. You just can't find out. Because essentially Zeta is saying, I don't care what you have in trumps. That's where we're going to play. But Zeta does actually work out better on this particular hand.
it could do what it yeah um but you see that doesn't really help you supposing partner has the queen jack of hearts and not the queen of clubs they're still going to bid five hearts over six clubs and you're none the wiser Really, you need to make two club asks to be sure that they've got Queen X. And that's the critical thing. There is just, it's just unfortunate. There is just too much that West needs to find out here. And uh, it's a good example of a sequence where just punting six is going to work better than going the scientific route of using asking bids. And a lot of people will just punt six diamonds at some stage because they'll think that's possibly what I can make. But it won't be, you know, sometimes as on this hand, they'll get a good result. And on most times, they won't get a good result. Okay. A quick summary. No, it doesn't. But almost, not quite, but almost, the only time where we would be unsure, where we knew partner had a short in the suit, but we'd be unsure whether it was a void or a singleton, or a singleton honour, is when they'd made an old-style splinter over a major suit opening. That's almost the only time. And because those splinters are now exclusion beta and responder is taking charge of the auction rather than allowing opener to take charge of the auction, essentially we don't need them to be able to show a void anymore. Okay? If we, if he's shown a void, we don't need to know what kind of a void. A void is a void. But if they've shown a singleton, we do potentially need to know what kind of a singleton. So ultimately, the step that shows a void will disappear from that kind of uh, repeat epsilon in a known singleton suit. Okay. I need to write it up first, and I'll, I'll need to publicise it in the forums, and we'll probably want to discuss it a bit. But uh, that's how it's going to go. Okay, guys. Um, I see a few more people have turned up. Welcome. I presume that you all got the time wrong. Tut, tut. Um... Nine o'clock UTC is the same all year round. It never changes. If you're unsure another time, just look it up on the world clock. If you want to find out what nine o'clock UTC is in relation to where you are. Okay, can I have four victims, please? Again, it'd be nice to have some fresh blood, but I don't mind if it's the old farts. Thank you, Mr. Lute. John assumes his traditional position. Come on, one more, two more. Thank you, Barry. The 
Don't be shy, guys. Come on, chaps, don't uh, stand around waiting for somebody else to do it. Just jump in, please. Thank you, Michael. All right. You need to pay the uh, the ISP a bit more, Sanya. in a minute guys just uh, try and do this one on your own I'll be back in a few minutes How are we getting on?
Okay, so here we had uh, one no trump showing spades, two clubs low beta, two no trump showing five controls. He is, isn't he? Five spades, sorry, three spades, gamma, four clubs, five to one top honor. Now, four diamonds was epsilon. Can't be relay beta because we already know exactly how many controls South has. Well, the trouble is you asked in clubs with five clubs. So four diamonds was asking about diamonds. Four no chumps showed second round control. I tell you what, Michael, just undo five clubs and bid five diamonds instead. You see, the thing is here, you're right, you know that the King of Hearts is missing. Now, what does Six Diamonds tell you? Michael? Absolutely. So what's your next bid going to be? Does it matter? Just just think about what he has to have got five spades and four diamonds and you know he's got the ace of clubs yes must have five spades and you know he's got four or five diamonds so now think about his hearts and his clubs well it doesn't have to be you you haven't asked about clubs you haven't asked about hearts he might have the stiff ace of clubs and three hearts, for all you know. But what does that... Think about it this way. If he's got three, three clubs, then he's got a singleton heart, and it's a club loser that you need to think about. If he's got two of each, okay, then you haven't got a club loser, but you have got a heart loser. If he's got three hearts and the stiff ace of clubs, then one of the hearts is going to go on your king of clubs because he's got the stiff ace of clubs now. And you've still got a heart loser. If you play the hand in spades. But if you play the hand in diamonds, your losing heart or the losing club is going away on John's fifth spade. This is very similar to the penultimate hand in the Bermuda Bowl last year. For those of you who remember it, there it was a motion fit in a minor rather than a nine card fit in a major. But the principle was essentially the same. If you play in the eight card fit, you get a discard. on the on the long spade but that isn't true if you play the hand in spades very good well done do you all see how how it, how you can work that one out in terms of the fact that in spades you do you're right you do have an inevitable loser in either hearts or clubs depending on south's exact distribution in those two suits 
But if you accept the 8 card fitting a minor rather than the 9 card fitting a major, your loser, and you will have a loser either in clubs or hearts, inevitably, but your loser goes away if you play the hand in diamonds. If it turns out that South's got five card diamonds and five card spades, then clearly you can make seven spades as well as seven diamonds. But the reverse isn't true. Where partner's only got four diamonds, you've got to play this hand in diamonds at the seven level. Okay, any other questions before we move on? Well done, Michael. Okay, let's try another one. Back in a mo.
Right, how are we getting on? On spade balanced, one no trump beta. Two diamonds. Three controls. Two no trumps, handing over the captaincy. Three hearts, three spades. Does who have birds, John? <coughs> I've got a parrot. We've got an African grey parrot called Gus who's a fearless kibitzer not no he's very good at kibitzing but his declarer play is not very good right four hearts if you think of it about it uh, Esther Four hearts has to be a cubit agreeing spades here. He can't have five hearts. So four hearts must be some kind of a bid agreeing spades. He could have bid four spades, which would just have been a natural bid agreeing spades. But four hearts, or four clubs, or four diamonds would also be a cubit agreeing the suit. So they haven't got... A control in clubs or diamonds but they've got a good hand for the bidding so far and you see that's the beauty of that four heart bid is it tells you exactly what you need to know which is that you've definitely got two diamond losers. If you'd gone off into um, four spades and then Q bidding and so on, you'd probably end up at the five or even the six level and you'd struggle to stop in time. Whereas Q bidding, avoiding all of that, you get all the information with the first Q bid. Well, very nicely done, guys. Good sequence. So, with a slightly different sequence, you might have... Uh... Yeah. I mean, you know, the fact is here, all East needs to know is that West doesn't have a diamond control. If they haven't got the king or ace of diamonds, and they haven't got a singleton or void, and we know that from the one spade bid, what's the point in looking past four spades? Absolutely none at all. Well done. Different sequence. You might have had a um, a uh, an epsilon bid, but uh, you can get you can get away without epsilons. Q bidding's very often as good. Indeed, a lot of the time, Q bidding is actually more space efficient than. Uh, Asking bids. Because generally, if you miss out a suit in a cube bidding sequence, it's a signal to partner that that may be where you've got a gap. If partner continues on, then you know that they can fill the gap. And so on. Okay, another one. Okay, now, those of you who were here for the lesson on beta will remember I mentioned the exclusion beta. This north hand is far too strong, far too strong to use exclusion beta. Um, 
exclusion beta is for very, very distributional hands. Um, and it wouldn't work as well on this hand. Don't forget to alert, guys, for the benefit of people who are relatively new to asking bids. Please alert all these bids. Just get into the habit of alerting them manually. I know it's easy to uh, get into the habit of relying on full disclosure, but really you ought to try and get out of the habit of using that because it's not going to be around for very much longer I don't think I think essentially once the support for the Windows client goes entirely I think FD will just die a death because you'll no longer be able to edit and upload the files Okay, so two hearts, agreed spades. Two no trump shows five to one top honor. Three clubs is relay beta. So five controls in the south hand. So we're missing an ace and a king. See if Michael can work out the best way to go here. Maybe a bit of lateral thinking here needed, Michael. Wrong, wrong choice. <laughs> if you think about it, Michael, there is one Epsilon ask that will tell you almost everything that you need to know. Absolutely right. So an Epsilon, don't refer to it as a cab. That's a whole different thing. If you're, gonna, if you're playing against OCP opponents, you can just say it's Epsilon in clubs. Don't refer to it as a CAB because most people won't have the faintest idea what you're talking about, whether they play OCP or not. Right, that's fine. Okay, so, partner hasn't got either the ace or the king of clubs. So what does that mean? Four hearts shows third round control of clubs. It does. But do you see what I mean about lateral thinking here, Michael? 
if you ask in diamonds, you still don't know about the hearts. If you ask about the hearts, you still don't know about the diamonds. But actually, if you ask about the clubs, you know immediately what partner's got. He's either got two small clubs, and he must have the king of hearts and the ace of diamonds. Or he's got three small clubs, in which case he's got the stiff king. But that's unlikely. It's possible that he's got three diamonds only. And two or three clubs. But either way, you want to be in seven spades here. Very good. Well done. That asking in your void is, is actually a surprisingly common theme. Here, it, it should have stood out because we know partner's got five controls. We know that one king is missing. Asking in your void actually um, pretty much tells you everything that you need to know. Especially when he shows up with third round control and he cannot have the ace or the king in clubs. It means he's got to have the ace of diamonds and the king of hearts. And uh, since he must have three diamonds at least to have rebid two diamonds over one no trump. And he cannot have less than two clubs. It means he cannot have more than three hearts. And your fifth diamond will take care of the third heart if he's got king to three and three diamonds. In fact, you're going to get two diamond discards. Sorry, two heart discards on the diamonds, potentially. So what? Yeah, like I said, you, you'll see that not every time, Michael, but you'll see that come up quite often. Okay, I think we've got time for one more. Um, let's try and give East West a hand. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Okay, last one, probably. See what Esther and Barry can make of this.
Okay, so five card spades, two of the top three honours, or all three top honours. West knows what that is. No, I think it's okay. You're going to bed in a minute anyway, aren't you? So. Yeehaw! So six controls. Thanks for that, John. Yeah, do turn up to John's practice if you can. Um, I probably won't be there because I'm on late tomorrow, so I'm not. I'm not finishing till nine. I know, Sanya. I keep trying. Very nicely done, Barry. Well done. Okay. We know that partner's got five spades and four hearts. <laughs> well said, uh, Sanya. Yeah, do try and get these alerts right, guys, because as I know at the moment you're playing with people who, most of whom know OCP, and you can potentially get away with alerts like beta or whatever. Just get into the, the habit of actually saying what the bid means. So in other words, um, rather than saying gamma, just say asking about spades. And that's enough, because partner's going to explain with their response what that shows. And as long as they know that Three Hearts is asking about spades, you don't need to... That's a bit personal, uh, Barry. I wouldn't go that far. <laughs> Sorry, couldn't resist. Um, okay, I... Uh... Just back to, to this sequence. We know we're missing a king somewhere. 
So we know that partner's got the Ace of Clubs. It is a very good tool. Um, okay, does it matter which king East has? Actually, in practice, no, it doesn't. As I think Barry probably worked out. Because if he's got the Ace, King of Clubs, that takes care of our heart loser. And if he's got the King of Hearts, that takes care of our heart loser. So the only thing that we need to ask is actually what he's got in diamonds. If he's got three small, which is possible but very unlikely, uh, then we've potentially got to stop in six. But if he's only got a doubleton, we can rough these diamonds good, almost for certain. Uh, in the long trump hand. Okay, anybody got any questions? Okay. Right. Next week, we're going to look at Delta. Um, which is, is relatively easy, Delta. It's a new kind of asking bid. It asks very specific questions about what partner has in one of our five-card suits. But Delta itself is a very restricted use asking bids it, it occurs very infrequently but it's a good introduction to theta and iota which use either identical or very similar responses respectively um, so do come back for the delta next week so if you get a chance have a look at the notes on delta um, and uh, i'll see you next week um, have a good week all. The beast from the east has arrived. It's been absolutely Baltic here today. Um, anyway, thanks for coming everybody and I'll see you next week. Bye for now.